health issue do you think a lot of people suffer with but have no idea? <sighs> okay. This sometimes gets confused because I had this person the other day. Um, they were going, they were, they were talking about some of the things that they were suffering with, and then they sent me a picture, and I and they said, and they said, listen, I'm like, um, I would go to get some medical advice on this, and go get an ultrasound and get your liver ultrasound and see if you have fatty liver disease, and their first response was, I don't drink, and I'm like, you don't have to drink to have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Because what happens is it's, it's a high accumulation of fat within the liver. And, and like, well, how would you know? I'm like, if you look at your body and you have a, if you, here, do me a favor, guys. I want you to do me a favor. Um, here's here's a, just a good screening to maybe go to the doctor and get some advice on this. As, and I said, you can diagnostically do this. Look down. Do you have a belly? You probably should go get it checked out. Do you understand? Because in order to even have that, you have to have the accumulation of fat within the liver and then it goes to our tissues that way. And therefore, by having it, do you know that non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is the leading cause of liver disease worldwide? Let me say it again. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is known as the leading cause of liver disease worldwide. Worldwide, 40% of the people, the men, have it. 26, 25% of the women have it. Now, I might be off by a percent or two on there because once again, they give you different stats. Um, but think of it this way. If 40% of the men worldwide have it, and there's six billion people, let's say half of them are men, 40% of the three billion people have it? That's significant. And what is the number one symptom of fatty liver disease? Not an alcoholic? None. There has to be some, to really see it, there has to be some liver damage that starts to come from it. So therefore, it's, it's kind of misleading. Um, now, once again, how, what's the best way to start with this? If you do have any form of non alcohol fatty liver disease, you want to bring your glucose levels down uh, first because, so let's talk about this. I would even, this is going to freak some people out, I'd, I'd even be careful at eating a ton of even healthy fats. I would support your body with, with more fiber and maybe some more leaner proteins that would do a great job of not grazing your glucose levels, not adding um, dietary fats to add to some other adipose tissue and stuff. So what I do is I would actually look at going really more lean meats and then also some high fiber-based things because that's gonna maintain your blood sugar levels. You're not gonna have triglycerides go up. You're not gonna have glycogen levels um, go up. They're gonna to start to do what? So when you start to, once again, you start to pull away glucose, within a couple of weeks, you're gonna to start to see, number one, you're gonna see um, a reduction of glycogen being in the muscles in the, in the liver. So therefore, there's gonna be less water retention and that's why people start to see some progress that way. Second of all, your body is going to need um, glucose in order to you know produce atp and energy and it can do it through fat or do it through glucose uh, so you can actually start to see fat, fat oxidation you can start to see your glucose being used to produce atp and so therefore you're going to see those mechanisms of doing that and it's going to draw it from the liver long enough and if you keep that long enough and then you can kind of support your body um, with things like chlorine um, if you ever think of this way if you ever, there's a thing called TMG, trimethylglycine, which is an amino acid, once again, a protein, um, that was found in beets. So that's why beets are really good for the liver. That's why if you look at um, things like milk thistle, things like dandelion root, uh, milk thistle is known as hepatoprotective. And therefore, but one of the major keys of even before doing all those things, you're gonna want to reduce your glucose intake because you don't wanna be you know, storing all this adipose and fat tissue in the fat cells in the liver, which is now going to, over time, is gonna to contribute to um, the leading cause of, of, of liver disease. See, the reason why people say alcohol is so bad for the liver, because it's kind of just kind of pure sugar. And then your body has to, um, your body has to now 
um, convert that and break it down and that constant demand on it can cause some problems. So when the liver starts to get fatty and starts to get a form of cirrhosis, there's some damage and now liver function goes down. It's like this. If all of a sudden you have, you know, placking, which is there's a form of calcium, there's a, there's a foam, there's an immune cell that produces that within the, the cardiovascular system, um, there's damage, those arteries and they just can't work as well. And then if they get and they, they, they don't move as well, they're, they're not as, um, let's say, flexible. Um, that's why certain blood pressure issues can come up. Then the sad part is this, it can lead to some very bad cardiac event. If, if that liver continues to have non alcohol fatty liver disease, now there's gonna be liver damage and that's gonna cause major issues, everything from removing you know, toxins from your body, breaking down waste that don't belong there, but even hormone conversions and other things that are needed in the liver itself. So those are factors I really want you guys to think about. So I believe that, once again, we all need carbohydrates. I just wanna see people eat high fiber carbohydrates. Now, I had this the other day, and once again, thank you for the comments. I really appreciate your feedback and comments even if something I say and thinks positive. Now watch this, watch. I had a person say, Doc, I ate fiber, and what I did is I got extremely bloated. Do you understand? Okay, let me explain why. If you think about fiber, there is a bacterial component of them eating it, consuming it, things like that. There is some microbial problems within your intestinal tract. And you might want to get a stool test or do me a favor, ferment the fiber. Fermenting actually even helps to break down and pre-digest it for the other microbes. So therefore you won't get the major fermentation happening within your small and large intestine. And so therefore you won't feel all gassy and bloaty from it. So when everybody tells me they can't handle fiber, then I look and say you might have some microbial imbalances that are leading to when that fiber hits your system. That's why fermenting things is so vital, is so vital in so many ways, so vital.